welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. Uh, my name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on the topic simple classification of substances and we are going to be looking at the kinetic theory. We, in our previous lesson we talked about the kinetic theory and also the state of matter and how those matter um, explained with the kinetic theory. So today we are going to be focusing on the effect of eating. Uh, so we'll be having a, a heating curve and later on we'll look at a cooling curve. So you can go back to the previous lessons and check the introduction bit of kinetic theory, including um, the definition of what kinetic theory is. So in our lesson, we are going to look at a heating curve. Uh, we're going to eat some components and then discuss how to explain a heating curve and then also what happens and to the particles in each uh, uh, part or level in each state and then later on we're going to look at a question uh, in regards to what uh, we will have discussed uh, in this lesson so we are going to look at the effect of eating substances and today we are going to discuss on heating ice uh, which is water in solid state so this ice was heated and then uh, the values were tabulated in a graph paper and then uh, this was the was uh, the summary of the uh, observations that were seen and also the final a tabulation of the data. So we are going to discuss each and every section uh, range, region in the graph and what it represents and what happens to the particles in that region. And we are going also to be using the kinetic theory to explain uh, these changes of the particles. So it is important for you to remember what kinetic theory was. So you look at, when you look at this uh, ice, it was heated at negative 10 degrees Celsius. And then you can see there is an increase in the uh, temperature in this graph. And the, uh, the, y -axis, the x axis has the increase in time or it was heated uh, and then it is changing its state with time. So the data was plotted and this is the result of the plot. So when you look at point A and point B, uh, you can see we have our ice that is in solid state at point A. And then we need to understand what is happening in between point A and point B. First of all, as the ice is being heated, we notice there is an increase in the temperature. That is the first thing that you notice. The temperature increases from negative 10 you notice this is around uh, zero degrees Celsius. So there is an increase in the kinetic energy. That's the second step. So temperature is increasing, then kinetic energy is increasing. And then when the kinetic energy increased, when we were looking at the theory, we said that kinetic energy causes the particles to have to move faster. In this case, because we are looking at the ice, we said that solid uh, usually vibrates. They vib vibrate in fixed position. So in this case, they are going to vibrate vigorously. They vibrate vigorously because of the energy they have acquired from the heat. We are bringing heat into this system. So the vibrations increase uh, with increase in the temperature for region A, B. So next we look at region B, C. You can see the first thing you notice with the temperature, it is constant. We always be looking at temperature, kinetic energy, result of the particle movement. So the temperature remains constant. Why is it remaining constant? So remember, initially the temperature had increased, so there was some heat that was applied into the system. So this heat that was applied into the system is usually helps in breaking the forces of attraction between the water molecules. So it is staying in the same temperature because these water molecules, uh, these ice molecules, the forces in between are being weakened. 
what is helping them to be weakened is the heat that has initially been supplied in the increase in temperature that when we were heating this solution. So increasing, the, the, there's constant temperature. Heat supplied is used to break the forces or weaken the forces of attraction between uh, the ice molecules. It's actually ice molecules. And then the ice molecules, when it's weakened, they start going apart. When they start going apart, they start melting, melting. So they start changing from solid to liquid. So uh, this place is where melting is occurring. So by the time we start at point B, by the time we end up at point C, all the ice should have melted. That's why it remains constant. It's giving it time to allow all the particles to melt. They are, they are, they are, they are part, the attraction in between is being broken, broken slowly by slowly with time. And then let's look at region CD, which is a small repetition of region AB. So the first thing, the temperature is increasing. You can see is an increase in the temperature from zero to 100. So when the temperature increases, we say the next thing is the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy also increases as a result. When the kinetic energy increases, we are supplying heat into the system when that energy increases the particles begin to move even rapidly and they collide with each other rapidly so the, the collisions increase when the kinetic energy increases. they have enough energy that movement is more so the same thing that happens with region a b and then finally, region DE, you can see the first thing we said the temperature. The temperature is constant. Why is it constant? The heat that was supplied initially is used to break the forces of attraction. And the moment those forces of attraction are broken, the water molecules begin to separate and they turn into a gas. When they turn into a gas, it is given off. So at D, the forces begin to be broken. By the time we get to E, all the water molecules have turned into a gas. So that is what happens in this heating curve. So next, we are going to look at the processes and the states in each and every region. So when we were starting, uh, Region A, B, there was no specific process that was occurring. But when we reached at point B, then the melting process started occurring. So by the time the uh, solid particles or the solid ice reaches at point C, it uh, will have melted completely. So the process here is referred to as melting. Then the water particles are heated, the temperature increases, the kinetic energy increases, particles move even more rapidly. When we get to point D, those forces between the liquid particles begin to break. When they begin to break, they start changing into gas. So we have some small gas particles here, small gas particles. By the time we get at point D, the 100% of the liquid particles have turned into a gas. They have separated fully. So the process here is moving from a liquid into a gas and we refer to it as boiling. So process between B and C is melting. Process between D and E is boiling. The other the other uh, regions do not have specific uh, processes that are occurring. What you need to remember is B and C and D and E. What about the states? So at A, B, at A, B, the state will remain a solid. The temperature is increasing. Particles are more uh, vibrating vigorous. It hasn't changed the state. But when we get to point B, then some of the solids start changing into a liquid, but not all of them at once. So we say this melting, whatever state is here, is a mixture of solid, liquid. So there are some solid that is in the mixture, 
and some liquid so that by the time we get to point C, all the solid will have turned into a liquid. And then from point uh, C to D, the state is liquid. There's no change that is happening at that point. But from point D to E, we have said there is boiling. So some of the liquid particles will start turning into gas. And then by the time it gets to point E, they have all turned into a gas. So we say that the state in D and E is liquid gas. So that is what we have for these two graphs. So next, you are going to look at a sample question. So the diagram below shows the eating curve of a pure substance. Study it and answer the questions that follow. So you can see the pure, the uh, pure substance in this question. So explain what happens between point A and point C. So we have A, B, and then B, C. So there are two points. So A, B. So first of all, we know A, B. This substance is in solid state. So what are the things we expect? The temperature increases. That's the first thing we talked about. And then in point, uh, then after the temperature increases, it causes an increase in the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. And then after the kinetic energy increases, we see the particles or the solid particles vibrate vigorously. That's what happens in AB. And then in BC, we can see that the temperature is constant. The temperature is constant. And initially, there was heat that was supplied when we were heating. So that heat, the heat supplied is used to weaken the forces of attraction. It weakens the forces of attraction. In the solid particles and when that uh, traction has happened, the weakening has happened, the solid particles begin to move further apart and change into a liquid. So that's what happens in point A, B and also point uh, B, C. So let's go to the next question. So the substance under test is definitely not water. Give a reason for this. So the reason why we can say confidently that this is not water is because we know, first of all, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. So that is the reason why this uh, is not water. And then uh, finally, what happens to the temperature between point B and C? B and C. So the temperature is constant, like we have discussed. Uh, so it's constant because the forces of attraction are being weakened by the heat that was supplied. So that's it. Um, this brings us to the end. So see you in the next lesson. We are going to be discussing on the cooling curve. See you.